So I was thinking, uh, I remember the days when I was a student, uh, many, many years ago, and uh, we had this job, the teacher gave us this job about finding the different names of the different luminaires and different stars, generic names, and we, we had a, a very hard time finding, finding out what does a spot mean or a beam mean or, or all this stuff. So um, in a more general matter, I would like to discuss today which are the differences between a spot, a wash, and um, a beam and a pink spot and many other different, different ways of calling fixtures. Uh, so I hope, I hope you, you enjoy um, this video. So basically, uh, if we are talking about moving heads, uh, there are some very clear standards out there in the market. Uh, doesn't matter the manufacturer here, it's not uh, either SGM or anybody else. Uh, there is some clear, clear definitions of what a moving head can do. So uh, the most standardized one is probably the spot. And a spot is a fixture with a very defined, sharp, uh, long throw uh, that where you can basically uh, focus and defocus this uh, footprint, this illuminated surface, add gobos into it, add a frost, add a prism, uh, apply different effects in front of the light to generate something um, very specific um, into a, a defined area. And normally, it's always related to projection. So when we talk about a spot, a movie head spot, it's because we are going to use gobos on it, very important, and we are going to have a zoom to open more or less the beam. For sure, we are going to have an iris uh, to reduce the, the beam even more. Uh, for sure, we are going to have a prism that is basically, it can be combined with the gobos to generate uh, a, a three-sided effect or, or a four-side uh, effect uh, that will uh, shape even more this projection, spread this projection in, in, in four different or three different directions. Uh, and uh, you definitely will have a shutter. If you're using a, um, all movie head, uh, on all the spot, um, that, and you have a lot of them these days still working, uh, then for sure this shutter is going to be a mechanical shutter, something, a plate that is coming in front of the light to, to stop uh, that the light goes through. Uh, especially if you're using a discharge lamp or a tungsten lamp, it's def very difficult these days to see spots with tungsten lamps, but definitely you have a lot of them even today with discharge lamps. They all need this kind of shutter, which is, it can be very fast or it can come from two sides sometimes if it's a dual blade or you have many, many different uh, mechanical designs to apply this shutter and then you will get this strobe effect, which is basically, if it's mechanical, is the light going, getting in and out. If it's LED, then it will be just the LED itself generating pulses in and out, switching on and off um, to, to generate this strobing effect. But definitely you, you will always have a shutter. Most of the, of the spots you will have a frost as well and uh, this frost effect is basically you can, you can combine it with all the rest and when you have a gobble for example uh, sometimes you want to um, have a more diffused, a more texture look and not a very defined sharp pattern uh, and that's the reason why you have a frost. Sometimes you just open the zoom completely and you want to add this frost to, to make it even softer especially if you have uh, if you're using a saffron light uh, and you have somebody uh, looking at the camera, for example, you don't want that guy to be blinded by, by the light source or, uh, or you don't want to see very defined shadows because of the nose and everything. So that's why frost makes a lot of sense. And then for sure, since you're going to have a zoom, you will have a focus as well. And this combination between zoom and focus is what makes this photo interesting because, of course, you can decide, okay, I will do... Uh, um, uh, beam with this specific size, We're, we will add a circle projection into it so it will look like a cone and then we can use the focus to, 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 to make 
the, the circle completely focused, but it might be that you want to generate an effect of uh, a forest in the back, if you are doing a theatrical production, for example, and you want to simulate uh, all these leaves coming from the trees, uh, generating this uh, wavy effect in the back, and sometimes you don't want to uh, have these leaves completely defined. So you can do it by just adding a, a gobble pattern, not necessarily a leaf gobble pattern or a breakup or any other uh, kind of, kind of uh, pattern, and then play a bit with the focus and even the frost to make this, this uh, texture effect that is in the back and can be recognized as a, as a forest even when it's not. Uh, so, of course, these are some, some of the features that you can find in a spot, and uh, you will find definitely pan and tilt, which is the thing here with moving heads, right? All of them have uh, pan and tilt channels, most of them 16-bit, which means that you have the possibility of make very accurate uh, um, positions, both with the pan and tilt, uh, because you will have two DMX channels per feature, in this case, two DMX channels for the pan, if you are 16-bit, two DMX channels for the tilt. Uh, in general, when you're talking about movie heads, each one of these fi uh, features is a DMX channel. But sometimes you have uh, two gobble wheels instead of one, each wheel having six different patterns. So that means 12 patterns in total, and you can rotate these patterns. If you can rotate them, then you will definitely have a rotation uh, feature where you can move the gobbles. Normally the prism will rotate as well. So all the things combined give you a lot of possibilities. That's why we tend to say that the spot is the base of stage hiding uh, in terms of movie heads. Because without the spot, it's really, really difficult to, to generate uh, this versatility, to go with, with different scenes and, and make a package of cue lists that makes sense for the kind of music that your artist is doing or for the kind of acting that you have uh, on stage. Uh, so that's more or less the spot. Uh, but then you have a slightly different type of a spot that we normally call profile. And when you have a profile, then basically you have the same idea, right, with the possibility of doing all these things plus, plus the possibility of having blades, and this is something that we call a, a framing uh, system. And with this framing, then you can shape the beam, shape the footprint the way you want. So, for example, you, want, you, you can make a square out of it, for example, right? And so you will only output light uh, for this square, or you can make a triangle, whatever you want. And this is because you will have four blades. Sometimes it's a dual blade, sometimes it's eight blades. Uh, sometimes it's just four blades that, that rotate, but basically, you will have some blades getting into the light, cutting the light in different directions, and then you can move the blade in and out as well. Uh, this is a mechanical system. Until now, it's the only way to do uh, proper framing, this mechanical system, even when with some spots, when you don't have the possibility of having a frame system because you don't have a profile, if you have a spot, you always have the chance to emulate some framing by using some gobos with a very specific pattern. For example, in this case, you can use a, a square a pattern into a gobble here, and it will look similar to having the four frames uh, cut in a specific way. It's just that you need to calculate very well how this effect will be applied to, to your uh, cues or to your scene, because the distance that you have will vary completely uh, the effect. So if you're using a gobo to simulate that, then uh, it makes a lot of sense that, that, that you calculate this as before to define the shape of the gobble or the size of the gobble. So that's a profile, and that's basically the difference between a spot and a profile. Uh, the profile tend to be bigger than the spot, uh, basically because you need more space. You need more space for this mechanical model that is going to interact and so on. And sometimes both the spot and the profile will come with what we call sometimes animation wheel, some people will call it effects wheel. Uh, so depends on, on the manufacturer, you will see it in one way or the other. Some manufacturers will do the gobbles combined with the animation wheel. Some manufacturers will focus on having gobble patterns that are more uh, focused on uh, the aerial effect. So in, it will shape the beam, but not necessarily create an interesting effect in the footprint. Some other manufacturers are 
very concerned about theatrical effects, so they will give you a lot of breakups and a lot of uh, small uh, uh, defined uh, dots or patterns that allow you to do a lot of uh, backgrounds and so on. So that is a spot and profile. But what is a wash? Well, the wash is like, if we consider spot like the base of stage lining, the wash is uh, the base of color, let's say. And as you know, stage lighting, it's all about color. Uh, normally, when you're playing with a spot, you tend to, to look for a very, very powerful light source that tend to be white, especially if you're using this charge lamp. In LED, things are a bit different. But still, you can see a lot of spots using white LED light sources because you are looking for this punch. You, what you want this punch, a lot of energy coming out of the fixture. Uh, so you can add all these things into the light and slightly you know, decreasing the output because everything you add into the light, everything you put in front of the light will definitely reduce your output. Uh, while in the wash, it's more about doing color and since uh, it's about doing color, then the LED has become a very, very popular uh, way of uh, creating a wash. Just because uh, you have probably, you are very aware about the additive color mixing and the uh, subtractive color mixing and the fact that you use a LED, when you use LED, the fact that you are adding color to the mix, it's very interesting. So if you have red, uh, you can always add a bit of green to generate a yellow, for example, and that will give you a lot of possibilities, tweaking the colors. Uh, because you, don't, you never need to think about, well, I'm reducing too much my output. Is that going to work with the previous cue? That's not something that, that needs to be in your head all the time because you are adding light. So it's more like a painter that is adding colors to, to, to a white uh, paper uh, instead of thinking, like in the subtractive way, uh, okay, if I have a white, then if we put a magenta, then uh, I, I will get those colors, but uh, if I try to mix magenta and cyan and yellow at the same time, then I will get nothing at all, which is completely the, the opposite way of doing light. When you are using a wash that is based on CMY, that it's one of the typical standards, um, then you will get a white light source, and then you will play with these flags, cyan, magenta, and yellow, mechanical flags, mechanical filters that will get into the light to generate the different colors. Um, and if you are using an LED wash, then it will, be, it will work completely the opposite way with an RGB system, that's the base. And then you will see washes that have more colors into it. You can see uh, an amber sometimes, you can see a mint sometimes, you can see a lavender sometimes. Uh, there are ma many different ways. Sometimes it's a yellow. Uh, depends on the combination that the manufacturer wants to offer. And it makes sense because sometimes when you're looking for a wash, you're looking for a high color render, rendering wash uh, because you have cameras involved and you want to show the colors properly. Uh, so if you do that, then it tends to make, to, to make sense to go for an RGB source that has something else, some other LEDs that are covering the gaps in the, in the color spectrum. But basically, very simple, a wash is just a fixture to cover an area with color. That's what wash means. You are just washing with color uh, the, the stage or, or whatever area you're doing, a facade or monument or whatever. The combination of these two, the wash and the spot, is what makes your cues, basically. Normally, you tend to make a base with your washes, and then you add the spots here and there as, an, as effects that sometimes mix together. Uh, there is another, uh, a third standard, let's say a third standard movie head, which is called Beam. And this is a funny name, because to be honest, uh, both the spot and the wash have a beam, and you can clearly see the beam defined. Uh, but the beam in, uh, was the, the last one to get added to this category, and the, w the reason why we call it beam is because this, this kind of movie head, it's basically a very powerful effect where you can see the throw of light, you can see the beam very well defined, very narrow from a distance, and it's crossing all your scenes, all your cues, uh, in, a, in a very impressive way. 
so it's a very, very impressive effect. Uh, that tend to be a problem if you use it all the time. Uh, but when you have a big number of them, then the, the effect can be very impressive. And normally, what you want is to combine all of them, or at least a spot of washing a beam, to make scenes that, that make sense, where your wash is going to be your color base, your spot is going to add some break caps uh, here and there with global projections and so on, creating the fine areas, spots, the finest spots in your stage. Uh, and then your beam will create this effect that is crossing all the, the, the rest of the effects, uh, cr creating something really interesting. So basically in the beam, you normally the market tend to, ac to accept uh, a lot of things that they cannot accept in the spot. So when you do colors in a spot, if you're using a white light source, you will normally use CNY. Uh, and if you're using a, um, a LED source based on colors, you might use RGB to generate the colors. But in the case of the beam, it's very strange that you use a beam, especially if you want to do, you have some, and that's also a, a, a nice choice, especially if you want to do colors. Um, in, and of course, when you have a beam in white light source, whatever color you do, uh, if you don't have an RGB LED source, uh, they are not going to be as bright as the, as the white, right? So uh, you tend to see uh, beams with color wheels, not with CNY. And the reason is that normally you already have washes to do your colors, you have also some color options in your spot, so your beams, it tends to be accepted that you have a color wheel because you will use it just for a specific effect with a specific color. And sometimes you change the colors as well, the color wheel allows you to do that, but you don't have a CNY system most of the time in a beam that is allowing you to have all the subtle effects or an RGB based um, system, an additive system. But sometimes you have also CNY, as I said, and sometimes you have RGB. Another thing you always have in a beam is gobos. And the thing with the gobos is that depending on the type of beam, depending on the optical system that you're using, if you're going to use it for long throws, you're going to collimate it to a specific focal point, if you want a big aperture in the lens or a small one, all of these things are going to uh, change completely the way the gobos will look with your beams. So if you're having uh, a gobo um, you have an, a, a traditional beam, which will be based in just optics with a, with a zoom, similar to what you have in a spot, but more powerful, more defined, uh, then the gobos will work similarly to what you will get in the spot with a, a pattern and, and so on. But most of the patterns that you will have this in this gobo wheel will be more for aerial effect, to see it in the beam and not necessarily into the surface, right? Um, some other uh, systems, I'm thinking now in the G7 Beast, for example, that is using a big reflector and a small reflector combined to collimate the light and so on. In that kind of fixture, the gobos, the only purpose of the gobos is to be a, an aerial effect, aerial effect with rotation moving around, so you get this waving thing into the beam. Uh, so it's not, not about uh, footprints illuminating areas and so on. Uh, and then sometimes, you get a zoom in the beam, sometimes you don't, because what you just want is just that defined effect in a specific narrow beam angle. Sometimes you have focus, definitely if you have zoom, you will have focus. Sometimes you have a prism, but it's not that you have many, or many other uh, features into the beam, because it's what it is, it's an effect. So, uh, let's leave it here for the movie heads. Uh, I hope you liked the video. Uh, in in some other videos, we will talk about the differences, uh, about static washes, and so on. I hope you enjoyed.